For those of you who have class with me, I want to spend a few minutes today talking about Semantic Scholar. This is one resource that you can use when you're looking for, let's say, primary research articles to support a thesis. Maybe you're working on a, an essay, a five paragraph essay where you're asked to include citations. And a Semantic Scholar is one option I think that will be useful to you in addition to Google Scholar and also uh, the digital library that you have uh, at the university. So today I want to talk about Semantic Scholar and this is the page semanticscholar.org and one of the first things I would do it would be to create an account so that you can sign in. Now when you sign in for the first time you basically have two options you can sign in with your Google account or you can create your own account using an email and your own password. Uh, although it shows sign in with your institution at this point, at the time of this recording, uh, this is not an option for us. So again, either Google your Google account or you can create your own account. Now I've already done this, so I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And once you've signed in, you'll now have access to the research dashboard, research feeds, and library. Today I'm just going to talk about searching articles and using the library. Again, once you've signed in to the account, you'll have this option to view your library. So let's say you want to search for a particular topic and you can still use the Boolean search using the operators and uh, not. Uh, you can use those to help filter your search. For this purpose though, I'm going to, for this example, I'm going to use the term native speakerism in applied linguistics. Okay, now once you have started your initial search, you'll see here along the top some options. And this provides a way to filter through depending on what you want to find. And I think what I would typically do would be to select has PDF because we want to filter and have only those results that have a, a PDF document that you have access to the entire article. And I'm going to select last five years because generally speaking, it's best to try to limit your references to the last five years, especially when you're th thinking or including primary research articles to support your main ideas. So now I have my filter and there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can go into each individual one and take a look at the PDF. Now sometimes the PDF file is available through or within the Semantic Scholar page. Sometimes you have to go to the publisher to find that information. All right, so going through here, I'm going to probably access these PDFs, read through this information, read through the studies and see if whether or not this information is useful. Now you'll notice in this example the first source that I selected was a book. So it's always make it's always important to make sure and maybe ask your instructor if there's a preference between using primary research articles versus using a book. But in this case you'll see that that you have access to both books and articles. Uh, if you search Google Scholar, typically you're going to find uh, articles. Um, but, you know, in this case, we have, we have both. Depending on your search technique, one way to go about this is to, let's say that you have, you have a list of results. You could easily go in and add these quickly to your library. Even before you have a chance to look at each of these documents, you might say, okay, this, these are some potential articles that I might later decide to include in my own writing. So what you could do is just from this initial results screen is to save this in your library. So again, making sure that you've already signed in, You'll have an option here to save and you'll notice along the right hand side of your screen you have an option to save it to your library. Now let's say that you just want to quickly save. You can easily go through here and scroll down and save 
to your to your library. Now I've saved a few here and let's say now I want to go to my library. I'll, I'll click account library and you'll notice here that I have I have a list of the papers that I just saved. Now by default I have a list of all my papers. I'm going to select unsorted. So if this is the first time that you've done this, your list will only include those that you added to your library but have not added a folder. So what you can do is you can add folders. So depending on your project, depending on maybe even the class, you can use this approach and organize your uh, and your organize your results into different folders. So let's say that I want to create a folder called pending. And because again, I haven't yet had a chance to look at these studies. So what I could do is I could, I could select each one of these and move it into my pending folder. And so again, I'm just clicking organize, clicking on the folder that I want to put this in, and you can see that it's being moved to the, to the folder. Now, in this case, I might choose to have a pending folder, and then in this case, a native speakerism folder. If my general topic or my general thesis relates to native speakerism, then my process might take me first to my pending folder, to my pending articles, and I might open up and read that article, and then I can decide whether or not I want to keep it. If, if I decide, well, this is not to my liking, this doesn't really support my thesis, I can remove it. If it is, I go in and read it and decide, yes, this is something that I want to include in my essay, then I can easily click here and then move it to the folder. Uh, in this case, I'm going to move it into the folder called Native Speakerism, and I'm going to remove it from the folder called Pending, because it's no longer pending at this point. It now will go into my folder. Now, I have a few extra articles here because I've already, I've already created uh, this folder and added some already. But you can see here by using a Pending folder and a folder for the actual uh, essay, you can create a process for yourself to, to find these articles and go in and uh, begin deciding whether or not they're going to help you or not. So again, using this folder, this folder system, okay, this will help you, I think, find, uh, find your articles that you're looking for. Now, I'm not going to go into anything. There's some other options here. Get research feed. Um, I'll create a separate video on research feeds, but for now, this will be a good place to stop. Again, using Semantic Scholar, create an account, setting up a folder system and a process for you to find articles very quickly and being able to use this search that we <clears throat> talked about here. Let me go back. Using this filtering system up here, of course, you can go and filter even further if you wish but i think at least clicking date range and and pdf or has the P pdf this will give you uh, a good way to access a lot of information very quickly in search of articles for your academic text so i hope this helps if you do have any questions or uh, want additional suggestions on your process for finding articles Make sure you're reaching out to me or any of your instructors um, and uh, try to use these resources that we have available, Semantic Scholar, Google Scholar, and most importantly, I think, the digital library here at the university. So good luck in your search.